Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, service station stores take stand on plastic use. Lavuka residents benefit from road upgrade. And bad road habits on the rise. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. All convenience stores at service stations around the country will surcharge its customers 10 cents for the use of every plastic bag from the first of next month. Fiji Fuel Retailers Association Secretary John Phillips says this will help boost their social change campaign and inspire Fijians to properly utilize plastic bags. Kelly Vavala reports. More than 4 million plastic bags are used by Fijians each year when they walk into any of the 75 service station stores around the country. We estimate that we use about 4.3 million plastic bags per annum, about 58,000 plastic bags per service station. Um, so if you consider that there's this number 4.3 million, we thought with the imposition of a charge we could reduce that in half at least. So there's 2 million less plastic bags, you know, 5,000 plastic bags per day, less going into the fill or being thrown on the road or wherever people um, dispose of them. Um, and it's easier in service stations because most people only buy one or two products. FFRA Secretary Phillips says they have been working with convenience stores on a social change campaign focused to completely ditch the use of plastic bags that end up killing many marine lives. So if we're charging 10 cents, all of us retailers, for a little bin liner, then, and you know that the money's going to a good cause, it's not going into general funds anymore. Government's now putting it into a special fund for the environment. Many Fijians say the initiative is timely as plastic bags have become an environmental problem. I think plastics dirties our environment the most. It kills our marine lives and we should recycle it. Recycle the plastic bag, recycle everything. It's like Japan, uh, recycle everything. FFRA says they're also exploring options to introduce many recycling points around the country that will reduce the amount of plastic products that end up in our rivers and oceans. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Police are awaiting the outcome of the analysis of drugs that was taken for testing by experts before they lay charges on the suspect. Police Chief of Intelligence and Investigations, ACP Mbiu Matavo, says the suspect is alleged to have collected a parcel that contained the alleged drugs from the Nandi International Airport on Friday. ACP Matavo says the man was arrested by police following a joint operation with customs officers in Nandi. It is alleged that the man is the son of an owner of a bus company in the West. The suspect was questioned and released yesterday, awaiting the report of the analysis of the drugs. Residents on Drymba Road outside of Levuka are benefiting from a major upgrade that has significantly improved access to both schools and work. Fulton Hogan Highway's Levuka Depot Supervisor Nasokon Damundamu says the upgrade is part of the company's commitment to service roads in the Outer Islands under the Fiji Roads Authority Maintenance Program. The 200-metre road had suffered from poor drainage, potholes and flooding, restricting access for taxis and four-wheel drive vehicles. FHH has cleared block drainage to ease flooding in the area, resheeted, graded and reshaped the road. The Drymba Road services more than 10 farming families, Drymba Village, as well as a housing authority development. The Fiji Police Traffic Department has yet again noticed some bad habits, which could potentially result in the loss of life. Director Traffic SSP Mahesh Mishra says recently they've booked more than 2,300 drivers as part of a joint police and land transport authority operation. Shireen Shivan reports. Simple safety practices that could save a life are still being disregarded by drivers and these include wearing seat belts and the use of mobile phones which recorded 369 and 21 infringement notices respectively. The accident happens in a blink of a second. Now it's a serious offense for a driver to use a mobile phone or any other gadget which his attention and concentration is diverted from driving. Road safety stakeholders have often stressed that the only way to prevent further loss of life on our roads 
is for drivers to change their attitude towards road safety. However, for 22 drivers who were issued infringement notices for driving with an expired driver's license, this is a clear indication that there are some who think they can disregard the law, which is a selfish act, considering that they are putting the lives of innocent parties at risk. While they are driving, they leave the driving thinking and they concentrate on their phones. Why? It seems so important to them because they see if there is someone new contacting them. In the... Because of too many road accidents, we get to see news of accidents every day on television. We'll try our best to see that how we can detect and how we can apprehend those people and how we can take them to task. Mishra says they need drivers to change their attitude and think of others and the harm they could cause when they choose to ignore simple road safety practices. The joint operation ends later this month. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Still to come, growing interest in beekeeping. And in successful Fijian, we speak to a handicraft seller. Details after the break. Mimbula Vinaka, Naya Langunga, and the Moala Rada Ranalika, or Tikungona Town of Singapore, and the Talisaka and Avarong and Mbula Fan, numbered the way in a serve. We have the Rasu Bunikurna Billy, Borani Vatskara and Barabinarna. The apiculture industry in Fiji has a huge potential as the interest among people continuously increases. Agriculture officers in Tailevu have been advised to train beekeepers well that will be involved in the industry. Akusita Tale reports. The closest many people get to bees is either being stung by one or consuming the final product, honey. A training of trainers for 22 agriculture officers was held in Tailevu this week on all aspects of bee farming to train farmers in the future. From this training into the, into the next uh, financial year, we are expecting a lot of results to come back to the headquarters to show what this training has created in the different divisions from which you come from. Around 1,000 farmers in the country are involved in this industry with over 10,000 beehives producing more than 200 tons of honey annually. Majority of farms in the Western Division and the Maritime Zone were largely affected during TC Winston, causing a major reduction in the overall production. Also equip them with, uh, with the facilities that they need to engage in uh, production of honey. And at the same time, you people uh, have been uh, selected as the uh, people for this training. Agriculture officers say they have a huge responsibility to ensure this training will assist many farmers revive apiculture. Looking at the production of the bees, uh, starting from the, from the uh, beehive components, looking at the, at the farming, uh, I think it's a... It's very helpful, especially to those people who are do bee farming uh, for their for their everyday living. Eh? We have more than 10,000 beehives on the ground. This is uh, after T.C. Winston. Before T.C. Winston, we had uh, more than uh, 14,000 uh, beehives, uh, but uh, now left with uh, just over 10,000. And most of the hives uh, are spreading out uh, in the west from Reiki Reiki to Singatoka. The Agriculture Ministry has also received an increased budget for apiculture for the next financial year. The increased funding will ensure more beekeepers are assisted. Akusit Tali, FBC News. A new chapter for Tavuki District School as Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama opened the school's newly built dormitory this week. Located in Kandavu, the school attracts students from Namuana and Namalata village and other surrounding areas. The construction of the dormitory, which cost $40,000, was funded by the Ministry of Education. Mbaini Marama, in officiating at the opening, reminded the community members of the government's continued support and commitment towards the development of the education sector. Kandavu is the fourth largest island in Fiji with close to 30 schools and a large population base. 
And in world news, outside the G20 venue in Hamburg, violent clashes between police and protesters have continued. Just as many as 30 marches took place. Dozens of people are injured in clashes and protesters even succeeded stopping some events. When opportunity knocks on your door, always be willing to take a chance because you never know how perfect something can turn out to be. And living proof of this is our successful Fijian tonight, Jita Bahari, the owner of the woodshed in Pacific Harbor Dumba. Akusita Tale has more. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. She was offered an opportunity from her brother-in-law but was not sure how she could do it. However, she said yes and learned how to do it later. Jita Behari worked in an office dealing with reports, journals and endless hours of sitting in front of the computer for close to eight years in a Korean firm after graduating from the University of the South Pacific. Little did she know she was going to handle handicrafts and engage with tourists daily in a totally new work environment. And I didn't have any idea of coming in this handicraft business. It just came as an opportunity. It was it came from my brother-in-law. Like he runs for, uh, he works for Rama Souvenirs. He owns that, so he gave me an idea. How about uh, you go in the handicraft business? There's a shop being selling, so why don't you try? So he gave me an idea, and then we went uh, on, and then we bought this shop. Jita, as she is commonly called, opened the woodshed in 2013, a name that best fits the various wooden Fijian-made handicrafts sold in the shed. From Nitoke artifacts like war clubs to contextual photographs that provide a glimpse of ancient Pacific cultures and Fiji's fascinating past, Jita says the woodshed has come a long way. It's like four years now, so it's a, quite a good business. I've been running slowly and doing well, uh, but it's quite a bit difficult also. But uh, managing with my family, uh, with my dad and uh, my brother-in-law, who have helped me out a lot in uh, this business section. One of the perks of a newfound interest is meeting new people every day who visit the shed to buy handicrafts or just drop by to Yan. This, she says, has been able to help her communicate well and become a better business person that she never thought she would ever become one day. Yes, we do enjoy it because there's a totally uh, majority, like it's a... Uh, you get people from all over the world over here, so different customers have different mind and uh, different. So we just try to also like talk with them. Jita travels to Pacific Harbor from Suva daily and drives back to Suva every evening. This is the only setback she has about her business. While plans are still underway to decide if a move to Ndeumba is possible, Jita says this will not deter her. Her advice to budding business entrepreneurs, women and girls, and those that have plans to run a business but are scared to make the shift is simple. Your mindset is everything. I think that ladies are more powerful and they can do whatever they, if they really want to do. As a woman, as a lady, I have been uh, doing this business and I'm proud of it. And I hope that the other ladies can also do something, whatever. It's just, uh, it's just on your... Um, uh, like, you, you, anybody can do anything. Jita doesn't have plans to diverse or expand her business just yet, as it's only been four years. However, if given a chance or another opportunity to expand, then she says she's open to it and ready to make changes. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Up ahead in sports, flying Fijians halfback Cerro Pepe Livularica ruled out. And Lautoka beats Nandi. This and more coming up. I'm Andreas Sorbokro of Nayabu Wendemburger Televu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're here at Tano Waterfront, Lotoka. Love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
Vodafone flying Fijians halfback Serupe Peli Vularika has been ruled out of the Pacific Nations Cup match against Samoa next weekend. Coach John McKee confirmed to FBC Sports from Tonga that Vularika has dislocated his wrist and will miss the match against Samoa. It's likely Nikola Matawalu or Naita Siri halfback Frank Lomani will be called in as a replacement. McKee will decide on the replacement later tonight. Fiji plays Samoa on Saturday in Apia. The Vodafone flying Fijians now turns its focus on the Samoa match in Apia next weekend after securing a spot in the 2019 World Cup. The Flying Fijians are looking forward to retaining the Pacific Nations Cup. Vashnil Prasad reports. After beating Tonga 14-10 yesterday, the focus now turns to retaining the Pacific Nations Cup. And up next for Fiji, Samoa next weekend. It's going to be an exciting game. It's going to be an exciting game. And, uh, I just want to thank all the supporters around here. Despite their loss to Fiji, Tonga still leads with five points, followed by Fiji on four points, while Samoa has only one. This means if Fiji beats Samoa, they'll secure the PNC title. We saw bodies around the place, but you know, they're having a good recovery now. The boys will really look after themselves tonight. The team returns to Fiji tomorrow before they fly off to Samoa on the same day. Light training runs have been planned for the team for the big showdown against Samoa. Yeah, focus to, to, the, to the game and, and Samoa and, and we want to be Pacific Nations champions and, and retain that trophy. So, so you know, there's, there's still a lot of stake next week. If Fiji sits firm on top in the Pacific, it will be a lot of struggle for the Samoans who are yet to qualify for the Rugby World Cup. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. New Zealand and the British and Irish Lions could not be separated as they played out a 15-all in their series decider last night. The series was drawn one all after the All Blacks won the first game 30-15 at Eden Park before the Lions won the second test 24-21 in Wellington last week. Vashnil Prasad with this report. Kings kicked a last-minute penalty to beat Bulls 31-30 this morning. Both teams scored three tries in the match. The Haguares returned to the victory trail when they claimed a deserved 40-27 triumph over the Waratahs. The Lautoka football side continued with its unbeaten run after defeating Nandi 2-0 in the Vodafone Premier League match today. Lautoka's Zibraz Sahib was the hero, scoring both goals in each half. Here are the goals. Well, look to come with a counter-attack. Across on towards the, uh, on towards the far touchline side. Kavaya Rawanga for the Lautoka side. Squares it back in field. Zibraz Sahib with a chance and Zibraz! From just outside, he saw the Nandi defenders uh, stuck in there. And in the 38th minute of play, Zibra Saev has opened the account for the Lotoka side. Quick throw, go on to Lotoka, get it back again. Kavaya Rawanga with a deep one here. Mohamed Shazil back to Vonu. Vonu into uh, Zibra And Zibra Saev from just outside the box uh, gets his second goal of the game. Fiji Nepal under-21 side has made a winning start at the World Youth Cup in Botswana last night. The Vicky Wilson coach side beat Trinidad and Tobago 55-28. Fiji plays Wales at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Fine weather apart from brief showers over the eastern parts of the country was experienced today. In the west, it was a fine day throughout Ba, Lautoka, Nandi and Singatoka. Temperatures in the center stood at 28 and 29 degrees. Ba and Lautoka was the hottest at 30. Eastwards, it was fine weather experienced in Rakiraki. However, it was cloudy in Nalsori, Suva and Pacific Harbor. Suva was the coolest again at 27 degrees. And up in Vanolevu, Lambasa was the hottest at 31 degrees. Number Walu and Savusavu experienced cloudy conditions and was cool at 26 and 27 degrees. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas, moderate southeasterly swells. And for the tides, high tide will be at 5.57 a.m. tomorrow, with the low tide at 6.24 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Sunrise will be at 6.41 and sunset at 5.49. For tomorrow, cloudy conditions will be experienced throughout the country, cool at night. Tomorrow's temperatures, Savasava will be the warmest at 29 degrees. And our further outlook, it's fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, cool at night. Southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas, moderate southerly swells.
Recapping the main stories for tonight, service station stores take stand on plastic use. Lebuka residents benefit from road upgrade and bad road habits on the rise. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, are you happy with the new tax threshold? Visit our FBC website to answer. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. Until next time from the team and I, good night. My name is Lucia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Island. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.